Welcome back folks. I keep answering Reddit questions. This one goes like this. Do you follow cognitive scientific literature on chess cognition? If yes, what were the most interesting insights in recent years? A great question. Thank you for that. So I can show my nerdiness in cognition and chess and expertise. Of course, I keep reading about chess literature because I want to pursue my postdoctoral research also in questions related to expertise and chess and educational psychology. So this is a recent article, 2023. Intuition in chess, a study ruled with world, world class players, world class chess players. The last author is Fernand Gobe. He is a very famous researcher, international master. He also wrote this book, by the way, the beautiful book. I recommend this to everyone who's interested in chess cognition. Okay. So the debate, or the basic claim is this. Intuition, right? How do you measure intuition? So when you say intuition in expertise, you mean a holistic understanding, right? Experts instantly understand the gist of their domains. Also, for example, Mangus Carlsen, right? He's great in bullet and blitz. He can instantly understand the most relevant thing in a position. And strongest moves come to him naturally, right? Effortless expertise, effortless understanding. And chess lends itself beautifully to measure this, right? Because we can objectively look at the move quality. We have this Euler rating, which is actually quite continuous, really shows us, you know, the levels of expertise. We can, for example, ask people to evaluate certain positions and then we can cross check with the engine, for example. There are so many nice things that we can use chess to measure intuition. And what they found in this article is that world-class chess players, top, top GMs, are much better at evaluating positions compared to candidate masters only within five seconds. And that's the key. They gave positions to these all these players, but they gave them only five seconds to make their judgment. That sounds incredible, right? But that's exactly the point. Because in five seconds, you have no time for deliberation, for slow thinking, right? You must rely on your intuition. You must have a feeling, an instinct for a position, right? And that's the beauty of this article because they still found a difference in skill, right? Higher rated players, super GMs, were much better evaluators, even when they have five seconds for those positions. That's an incredible finding. Of course, there is implications about cognitive science of intuition. For example, Daniel Kahneman's theory, system one and system two, right? Because he claims they are sort of separate systems. There's also Robert Dreyfus system, right? He says intuition expertise is intuition. He claims, you know, experts, they don't deliberate. They instantly see directly the most relevant thing, right? There is no deliberation. There are no different systems. But there's also Simon and, you know, Gobe school of thought. It's chunking or template theory of expertise. They say it's a, it's a combination. Experts need those chunks and pattern recognition, but also they need the selective search right? Because search is also important in chess. Sometimes you have a very nice feeling, an instinct about the position, just like here. Oh, it looks like a Greek gift sacrifice. Yeah. I'm smelling something. I'm so, oh, I'm smelling something here. It looks like a Greek gift because I've seen similar positions before, but does it work? Right? Does it work? And for that, you need to forward search. But you see, the search is selective. <laughs> the search is much, much more selective. Experts, they don't look at the random directions. Right? If you give this position to amateur, amateur might even look at most like, you know, bishop b5 in this position. But expert is much more directed. He's using his pattern recognition, but it's not enough. It also needs to be calculated. For example, bishop h7, king h7, knight g5, king g6. Do you go queen g4 or some other move in this position? And this needs deliberation, right? h4 is the best move in the position. And white wins after this series of moves. Very, very quickly, I'm just showing you. Mate, right? Here, instead of h4, by the way, instead of h4, if you go queen g4 directly, right? If you go queen g4 directly, that would be a mistake because f5 is strong for black. You see, you need to calculate it move by move. And black is actually better in this version. Greek it doesn't work for white. You see, it needs precision. White must calculate it properly. But going back to the initial position, of course, the Greek gift pattern was screaming in this position. And that's also how we become an expert. That's how we become a stronger player by accumulating those patterns. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time, right? So this relevance of this article is that 
it can tackle these questions. For example, some of the positions they gave this in this, in this, in this study was more complex than the others. There were more pieces on the board. And then even experts' evaluations suffered a little bit, right? It was a bit more difficult for the experts, even the top GMs, to properly evaluate when the position was more complex. This means, this implies, that Gobe's theory got supported because it also means that there are lots of chunks, there are lots of patterns to be recalled or to be, uh, let's say, manipulated in more complex positions, right? Like a bottom-up approach. And evaluation suffered. You see, this is the basic debate scientifically. Chess is only used as a tool to answer those questions, big picture questions, expertise, intuition, holistic understanding. And chess is a beautiful game because it lends itself beautifully in such scientific endeavors, right? That's exactly why I also want to pursue this later on in academia myself. Now, coming to this, today's beautiful session, I will test you folks. Please get a piece of paper and pen. Please sit down because we will replicate this experiment. I will now show you 10 positions in a row you need to judge yourself. You need to see and evaluate. And you will write down on YouTube. You will write it down on YouTube, your evaluations, your judgments of every single position. And also please write down your rating, online rating, either rating, so I know. You can write, for example, one side is clearly better, slightly better, or the game is equal, okay? You can even give me numbers, evaluation, for example, plus two, plus three, plus one, it's your call. Please get a piece of paper, I will give you five seconds. And importantly, you're always looking at the side that is on the move. So when, if I show you the position from the black's perspective, it means it's black to move at that moment. Okay? So are you ready? This will be a fun experiment. There will be some delay in, in, the, in transmission. Sometimes it, it cannot be maybe, you know, exactly, precisely five seconds. But I will try to keep it to around five seconds. Maybe it will be like, let's say, six seconds in some versions. It doesn't really matter. Right? But please don't cheat. Please Take a piece of pen right now so you don't rewatch this video, right? Because then you need to you will look at the position twice. So I want you to be really, really precise right now, folks. If you have no time right now, stop the video, come back to this moment later on, and we will make this experiment all together. I am very much curious about these results. If you're ready, there comes the first question. I will count it down from three to zero, and then I will show you the first position, and then I will start my timer, okay? Three, two, one. There we go. Okay, this was the first position. Was it easy? Was it difficult? <laughs> there comes the second position, folks. Three, two, one. There we go. Okay. Here comes the third position. Are you ready? Get a piece of paper. You can start video, of course, in the middle to write it down, right? You can start video, write down your ideas, write down your evaluations and get ready for the next one. Three, two, one. There we go. Here comes the fourth position. Are you ready? Three, two, one. This will be fun. Let's go. Okay, the fifth position is coming. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. Sixth position is coming. The sixth position is coming. Three, two, one. Let's go. The seventh position is coming. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. Eighth position is coming. Three, two, one. Let's go. Ninth position is coming. 
Only two left. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. And finally, the 10th position is coming. The position 10 is coming. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> I hope I not make a blunder. I hope I show you 10 different positions approximately in five seconds. Could be the difference, of course. We are not, <laughs> we are not doing this real scientific experiment, but you get the gist. You get the idea, folks. I hope you didn't cheat yourself. I hope you did it properly. Now I want you to just post your comments on YouTube. But from position one to position 10, tell me what you're seeing. Is it white or black who is better and how much? Now I will make another video depending on your comments on YouTube. And maybe we will see some results. Maybe we'll see some interesting patterns that might tell us that this paper is white even for potential lower rated players because the, <laughs> the let's say the weakest player in this paper was a candidate master let's say around 2000 level player right does it also work with let's say amateurs or adult improvers i'm not sure we'll see right thank you so much and we will keep doing these things chess is so beautiful science is so beautiful and i will catch you very very soon folks thank you so much